The menu where you make your sale on stock track is my shop. Before you start selling, you have to check if the location you are is where you really want to sell from. I'm going to pick leave it as shop outlet here. Here you're going to see the different categories of items that you have or products that you have. And if you're using a barcode scanner, you just click on this place, on this scan barcode, and use your barcode scanner to scan the barcode on your product. Once you scan that, you're going to see the product here. But before you can start selling, you have to click on start sale. Once you click on start sale, you start selling your item. So I'm going to add this item here. And I'm going to change the quantity to 3. You can see that as I change the quantity here, the total price changes here. Let me add this one as well and change the quantity to 10. You can come here and just change the quantity. You can delete. You can give a discount. You can say, okay, I want to give a discount in amount. I'm giving this person 200 naira discount click ok and it calculates that discount you can see with 200 naira discount you can change the selling price from 830 naira to 1500 naira click ok and you can see it has changed the price for you immediately so let's say you have item already stored and your prices has changed you can always come here to change the prices or you are having a promo and you are dropping the prices you can come here to drop those prices so here you can change selling price you can give a discount you can give a discount in percentage and say okay i want to give this person 0.5 percent discount once you click ok it's going to calculate how much discount it is and take it out of the total amount the customer is going to pay you here is where you sync your data just in case you don't have internet service at the end of the day. This button here is for you to add your favorite items. So what are the items that people are buying the most? Is it bread? Is it chocolate? So I'm going to add this chocolate as my favorite item and you can see it here. For all these ones that have pictures, it's because they uploaded the pictures of those items. If you're not uploading the picture of your items, you're just going to see the names of these items as they are here. So I'm going to add a customer to this sale so that I can record this sale against that customer's name. So here I'm just going to click add a customer. And of course you can immediately add a new customer to the sale you are making. If that customer is not saved yet, you can click here and add that customer information. You put the customer's name, the email address, the address of the person, telephone number, and opening balances. That's if you're interested. If you don't want to see all this information, you can go to the settings menu and uncheck the items you're not interested in seeing. Click submit and you have created that customer. But now I'm going to add an already existing customer. Let me use Cardiary. As a customer I want to use and you can see it has added cadre here and it's going to add cadre to that sales now that cadre has been added to this sale I want to close the sale and sell to cadre but before I do that I want to quickly show you the menu that are at the bottom here now I'm going to show you the menu at the bottom here and how they work expense from cash sales this is what you can use to spend money from your till or from the cash that you've collected from customer for selling for that particular day. So let's say you open your business by 9 o'clock and after 12 o'clock you have a bill that you need to pay and you need to pay in cash. Out of all the monies that you've collected from customer from when you open your business to that 12 o'clock, you can make an expense and record that expense here. Just put the name of the person collecting the money, the reason for buying. Let's say I use um, security. 
the name of the person mr jones the amount 200 and the category that's the expense category i'm just going to come to security here if i have security if i don't have security i'll put it on another expense aid that i normally put my security expense into so let me just look for one i can just use office provision and cleaning materials click save and you can see that expense this is the expense receipt i can print this receipt and keep it if you have sales girls working on your system you can let them print this kind of receipts on their thermal printer and show you as evidence of payment to those people along with the receipts those people will be giving them for payment so that's how that works the other one is receive from customer account so let's say um you have a customer that wants to pay in advance for a particular item or for no item at all and you just want to deposit money into their account that is with you so you can say okay um mr kadri deposited fifty thousand so that his wife can come any time in the month to pick whatever they need whatever groceries they need and you click the payment method maybe they use bank transfer pick the bank that they paid to diamond bank accept payment and this is the receipt for Mr. Kadri's payment to you that, okay, Mr. Kadri made this payment to you and you give this Mr. Kadri this receipt as evidence for paying you this 50K. Mind you, Mr. Kadri has not come to pick any item. He's just paying this 50K down so that his wife can pick whatever she wants without having to bring cash. The next one is receive credit payment. Let's say you have a Mr. Adaora that has been owing you. You can see this customer account. The credit is 1650 So Adaora will be is owing you 1650 But you are not around in the shop. And your sales girl is around. You, your sales girl is, wants to collect this money on your behalf. So she comes in and asks how much am I owing. They just go into our account and see how much is owing. That's 1650 She pays this 1650 The cashier or your sales attendant picks the payment method. Let's say it's cash. She accepts the payment. And you see a receipt for Adora will be for this payment. This receipt can also be printed and given to her to keep the, the salesperson can also print one receipt and keep so that you can get to see all the transactions as well so that is what the more button works for the store sale you can use the store sale menu in two different ways the first way is if you have a regular customer that buys a particular set of items from you let's say you have a family that has a baby or they have a twins a set of twins and they buy the same amount of items from you and you don't want them to keep coming all the time to pick all those things one by one you can store their sale and say mr mr g days monthly supply if you put Mr. GD's monthly supply and click store sale, what it's going to do is it's going to store the items you have. You can see there is no more product in this basket. It's going to store all those items I put here as Mr. GD's monthly supply. So if you want to load that sale, let's say Mr. GD now comes at the end of the month and says, okay, I want my regular supply. Give me my items. You don't have to start pinning or uh, scanning things just come here and load mr gd's monthly supply and boom you're going to see all the things he buys monthly here 
then you add the customer as Mr. Jide or if Mr. Jide is selling to or buying on behalf of someone else, you load that person. But you put Mr. Jide here, I'll put Mr. Jide here as the buyer. And once I'm done, I'm going to click pay. So now I can add the different payment method Mr. Jide is going to use to pay for this transaction. I'm going to add a cash of his total is 10,000. So I'm going to add a cash of 2,000. He only had 2,000 Naira cash with him. He has a card and he says, okay, he wants to put his card um, transaction. He wants, to use his, he wants to use his card to pay. And he wants to pay 5,000 Naira from his card. The card is going to, the POS I'm using is going to be a Diamond Bank POS. So I'll pick Diamond Bank as a POS. On the card details, you write the last four digits of the card. The last four digits of the card. Let's say two, three, five, six. Then the amount tendered is going to be 7,000. You can see his payment is not complete. So I'm going to add a bank transfer to it. And then uh, it's transferring to our GTB account. And the bank transfer is paying is for 6,000 Naira. And it's telling us, okay, let me add. 4,500 2,000 so it's going to that means it's still owing us 1,175 that 1,175 will say okay I want to use it as credit sale and I can put that 1,175 as amount that he wants to owe us and once i'm done with that i'm going to put complete sale you can print the invoice here you can email the invoice if you have his email and you can click complete sale i'm going to click complete sale and transaction complete print and this is mr gd's you can see that it's prompting to print on my printer so I'm going to click cancel. This is Mr. GD's receipt. If you have a thermal POS printer, it's just going to print this receipt and you can go ahead and give it to Mr. GD. And that is how you make sale on my shop using your stock track software. If you want to load, the second way you can use your store sale is you have three customers in front of you. One of them, you've started entering. Let's, let me enter two items for one of them. Then you want to start this sale because this person went on the phone. So you can just put, cause you won't be able to ask the customer their name. So you just look at the feature of that customer and use it to save this sale. So let's say the woman is wearing dreadlocks. Put dreadlocks. Then you click store sale. Immediately you store the sale, you can start attending to another customer. You can start attending to another customer. And before, while you're attending to that customer, once you're done with that customer, you can load the sale, look for the dreadlock sales, load that sale, and continue selling to that customer. So those are the two ways you can use your store sale. You can also search for sales by receipt number, by sales dates, by sales person, by product. So let's say I want to check for the sale of um, by this sales person, which is Chi. I click here and see if Chi has sold anything. Chi hasn't sold anything. By date, I click here and check the date by receipt number. Enter the receipt number and check the, the receipt so that is how you search for sales accept change is for you to give change to your salesperson so that they can give lower denomination to your customers that's the change that they need to collect after paying you cash so you can come here and say okay they gave them a change of five thousand so the person accepts that five thousand as change and you can print the receipt 
of the change you gave that person so that because when they accept that change it means they make a sale of 50,000 naira because you've given them 5,000 as change before they are, they will need to remit 55,000 naira to you so at the end of the day when you are finished selling to all your customers you have to come here and close your sale so you can see here for this particular transaction these are all the things that I did for the day so I can close my register so this is like just closing your till box or closing your sales station so if you have employees that work on shifts you can put them on this platform such that by the time they are closing it closes that person's name or transaction out of the system and you'll be able to generate that person's report once you click on close sale you're going to see the close register for the day you see the cash the the sales by payment type the cash payments the card the bank transfer the check the customer account credit sales the total that was done and once you click close register that will be synced and you are done for that day or that particular sales representative is done for that day so that's all to my shop